Welcome to Lab 2, Enzyme Catalysis. Part 2A will be done as a demonstration. Part 2B and 2C I will do for you on the video camera. Part 2D you will actually perform. So let's get started. For Part 2A we're going to test and see what catalase the enzyme we'll be using in this lab does when mixed with hydrogen peroxide, H2O2. So to test that, I'm going to take 10 milliliters of the hydrogen peroxide, pour it into a beaker. So I have 10 mils of hydrogen peroxide in my beaker. This is our catalase solution. It is an enzyme, so it needs to be kept on ice or as cold as possible as often as possible. Okay? I'm going to take one milliliter of it and mix it with the 10 mils of hydrogen peroxide. Mixing the catalase with the hydrogen peroxide, what do you notice? Nothing. Bubbles. Okay, as you mix it, more bubbles. As you mix it, more bubbles. The catalase is interacting with the hydrogen peroxide. The catalase speeds up the spontaneous reaction of the breakdown of hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen gas. The bubbles you saw was the oxygen gas escaping from the solution and then there will be water left behind. So we saw a positive reaction with the catalase enzyme to the hydrogen peroxide. Now I'm going to take a test tube of one milliliter of that catalase solution and I'm going to boil it. So we're taking our milliliter of catalase and putting it in the hot water bath for about five minutes. I have boiled our catalase for six minutes. I'm going to remove it. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Boiled catalase. A fresh batch of hydrogen peroxide in my beaker. Boiled catalase and hydrogen peroxide. Notice the reaction. Nope, no bubbles. Boiling the enzyme, catalase, denatured it. Means it was unusable, unavailable to react. So I'm going to macerate or try to demolish this potato as much as possible in this mortar and pestle. Potatoes and liver especially contain a lot of catalase. So we're going to see if we can collect catalase from this potato and test it on our hydrogen peroxide. I have a fresh batch of hydrogen peroxide in this beaker. I have my macerated potato in the mortar and pestle. And what I'm going to do is just pour some of that into the hydrogen peroxide so we can see what happens. Oops. What do we notice? We notice bubbling. So that is our evidence that potato contains catalase. So, you need to write down the results of our test. Catalase with hydrogen peroxide normally produced bubbles, evidence of oxygen production as hydrogen peroxide is broken down. Boiled catalase produced no bubbles, denaturing of the enzyme. And potato catalase produced a very vigorous reaction which is still reacting as you can see by the evidence of the foam, the bubbles. to do 2B for you for two reasons. One, a demonstration of the titration procedure, and two, to set our baseline for our uncatalyzed uh, amount of hydrogen peroxide in 10 milliliters. I have my 10 mils of hydrogen peroxide. I'm going to put that in my beaker. Because this is going to be uncatalyzed, I'm going to add water as my one milliliter of catalase 
in substitution for that. So this is the control, adding water. Nothing happens. And then to keep the amount the same, the control, everything is the same except the catalase, I need to add my 10 milliliters of sulfuric acid as well. So I now have 21 milliliters of liquid, 10 milliliters hydrogen peroxide, 1 milliliter water, 10 milliliters sulfuric acid. What we'll do with this is measure out 5 milliliters of that solution into a separate container to titrate with. So I'm going to go ahead and use my hydrogen peroxide container to measure that out. 5 mils into a separate container to titrate. You are going to want to put the container on a white piece of paper to have a nice background for the titration process, so I will do that as well. The potassium permanganate solution I'm going to get in my syringe. I'm going to try and get about 5 mils. As long as I know exactly where it starts, I'm okay. I don't need exactly 5 milliliters. But you do need to be careful to read the syringe correctly so you know the exact amount that you start with. So we will. Oh. So I have my potassium permanganate in my syringe. I've looked at the top of the syringe where the potassium permanganate starts, and I have 5.4 milliliters in my syringe to start with. This is what titration is. I'm going to drop one drop at a time into my 5 milliliter solution of hydrogen peroxide, sulfuric acid, and water. It's going to turn a purple pink color. It's actually more pink. You have to count the number of drops. One. The pink color, as I swirl, will disappear. Okay? Two. If you have someone swirling while someone drops, it makes it a much faster process. Three. And you're going to continue to titrate until you drop a drop and the pink does not disappear. Four. Let my screw ups. <laughs> so if you see, the pink continues to disappear. And I stopped counting, counting the drops once I got over a milliliter because I can just look at my syringe to know how much is in there. For the longer periods of time, you're probably going to want to count drops because there's not going to be a lot of hydrogen peroxide left over. But for the earlier time periods, you're probably going to have a, over a milliliter of potassium permanganate used. So you'll need to count the drops. See with vigorous swirling how it still stays a brownish color. So we've reached the end of our titration. This is our titration end point. Okay? 7.8 mils to titrate that out. Now, the potassium permanganate is not directly correlated with the amount of hydrogen peroxide left over. It's proportional. But we're going to use the number of um, potassium permanganate mils to see in relative to other tests that will do how much hydrogen peroxide was left. So since it took 7.8 milliliters of potassium permanganate, there was still quite a lot of hydrogen peroxide left. It was never catalyzed, it was never broken down by the catalase, and therefore that makes sense. So on your 2B, page 24, the baseline calculation, final reading of burette, the syringe, was zero. <laughs> Initial reading was 7.8. And therefore, your baseline, final, final minus initial, is uh, 7.8 milliliters of potassium permanganate. Now I'm going to show you the materials needed for 2D and talk you through the procedure. I need you to have your lab papers out so that you can make notes on it as we go. It is on page, it is on page 26. The procedure for 2D, so you need to have that page open. So first off, we're going to start with the containers to hold our catalase solution. You have these handy dandy plastic containers and a sharpie that you will need to either relabel if they're not correctly labeled for you, 10, 30, 
60, 90, 120, 180, and 360. That's the amount of seconds that we're going to allow the catalase solution to react with the hydrogen peroxide. Once you have that done, set them all out so they're in a row. It's easy to keep track of. You have your hydrogen peroxide solution, which you are going to use the plastic graduated cylinder to measure out 10 milliliters of. Please write plastic graduated cylinder next to step one. Step one on page 26, so you remember which one to use. You can put the 10 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide in all of your little containers at one time if you would like to. You don't have to. You can do it how you want to. The sterile pipette in the plastic and paper wrapper is for you to measure out your catalase solution. Once you open it, if you notice, I'll have to zoom in. if you notice there are gradations and lines on the pipette, when you are sucking up or gathering your catalase solution, you want to fill the tip to this point. This is the one milliliter point. So as you release the bulb, it comes up to here. Once you have it there, you pull it out of the solution and totally release the bulb. Okay, so one more time, you press the bulb in, put it in the solution, pull up enough to fill up to the one milliliter point, pull it out and release the bulb. And what's in the bulb should be one milliliter catalase solution. You need to get your sulfuric acid solution ready to go because for your first time, you only have 10 seconds after you add the catalase solution before you need to add the sulfuric acid. This is going to stop the reaction between the catalase and the hydrogen peroxide so that we know the catalase only had 10 seconds to interact with the hydrogen peroxide. So you will use the glass graduated cylinder for that. So next to that step on page 26, write glass graduated cylinder for the sulfuric acid. So you have 10 mils of hydrogen peroxide in a beaker. You add the one milliliter catalase. You start your timer, 10 seconds, high, uh, sulfuric acid. You then can set that aside. You don't have to worry about it. The reaction is stopped and you can do the titration later. You get your next 10 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide. You get your one milliliter catalase solution and your sulfuric acid ready. You put the catalase in, let it react for 30 seconds. Sulfuric acid, set it aside. You can do the same for all of them. The 360 seconds, remember, is six minutes. So you might want to do that one first. Let that react and do the other ones as the six minutes is going on. So it's up to you, again, how you do it. But you need to manage your time wisely. The last syringe in its container is to be used with the potassium permanganate. It's a nice purple solution. This is what we're going to use to find out how much hydrogen peroxide was catalyzed by the catalase broken down into water and oxygen. So we're going to go through a titration process, which I'm going to demonstrate with 2B. The titration process you just saw me do will be what you perform on each of your time-delayed solutions after you've stopped them with the sulfuric acid. It would be smart to have two people starting on the titrations while two other lab members are finishing the reactions timed adding sulfuric acid. Because as you saw, it takes a lot of time to titrate it out to endpoint if there's a lot of hydrogen peroxide left over. So I just did 2B for you. You will perform 2D, which I will talk about next, and then I will do 2C and give you the results for 2C as well. Thank you and good luck.